You're good. They, that's they, yeah, that's what we do for our virtual kids at night. Cool. Oh, it's like going to reverse it. Is that okay? It'll, it'll come out normal. Oh, okay. It, yeah, I, yeah, sorry. Cool. All right. Hey, y'all. Hello. How are Hi. you? Good. Okay, so today we're going to talk about some research tips for your IAs. And a lot of you, I know since y'all have come in here before, might know some of this stuff, but it's just a refresher because there's some things that have changed with our databases for Hall County. So today we're going to talk about finding your data online and your research online and using the Hall County resources. I'm going to show you a little bit about citation assistance. It's super early on in the game, so we might revisit that a little bit later and then give you guys a credibility checklist if you want to you know, go to Google or Google Scholar or things like that. So, okay. So when we talk about finding data online, the first thing I usually tell students is not to go straight to Google. Um, everyone always goes straight to Google. They usually disregard what I say and they just go and they start typing and things like that. The thing that's nice about Google is obviously it's going to give you the most amount of information, but then to me it creates a little bit more work because you have to filter through to find credible sources, you have to find the citations, you have to do a little work on the head, uh, or after the fact. I like completing my work a little bit more efficiently and saving some time. And so what I would do if I were you is use our Hall County resources first and then use Google and you know the entire world as like kind of like your last option or to find super specific information. So the research tools that we'll talk about are Galileo, Gale Research, and SIRS. Those are the three that are available on your launch point. It should automatically log you into those, um, but the Galileo password is thumb in case you need it or you know, you're working and it doesn't work. All those passwords too are available on Infinite Campus on an announcement. If you're at home working and something's not connecting you right away, that'll help you out. When you go to Galileo, Gale, and SIRS, don't go to just Google and type in Galileo, those kinds of things. It, we have our own unique links on LaunchPoint, so it'll be easier if you always go through LaunchPoint. Um, we also have eBooks and the Encyclopedia Britannica. Encyclopedia Britannica is also on LaunchPoint. And then we have print resources in the Learning Commons. As you guys know, you know we had a renovation here a few years ago and got rid of a, a lot of our um, you know, stacks and stacks and stacks of books. We still have print resources here, but the reason I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Destiny Card Catalog is because we have a lot of eBooks too. Um, and then, like I said before, Google Scholar should be you know, your last kind of effort thing. And then very, very last should be you know, main Google. Um, and then the other thing I'll tell you about is proofreading. So a few students before you guys, especially in IB, have used um, me as a resource for proofreading, and I would highly recommend that. So I can be a second set of eyes before it gets to Mr. Gall and before you submit it to IB, and I would definitely recommend that because I can work with you all day long on these. I know there's a little bit of limitations elsewhere, um, but I can be that second set of eyes to look over some stuff too. So what I'm gonna do is go to launch point and you guys are welcome to kind of follow along with me too. And I'm just gonna briefly show you those resources. The things that you'll notice is it's going to be you guys kind of getting into it and then you know, Wednesday when you come back, we'll be walking around helping you too. But once you go to launch point and you click on Galileo, Oh, that's the other thing. I would also go in this order when you're looking at the databases. So Galileo should be first, and then you could look at um, SIRS and then Gale. Galileo has the most resources. So if it doesn't automatically log you in, which it didn't for me, um, you're going to log in and click high school. And once you do that, it should go ahead and do it. You should see that Hall County Schools right here. So that's kind of nice. And then it just looks exactly like Google if you've never used Galileo before and just it has a search bu button and you can go. Um, the nice thing if you scroll down, you'll see that there's databases by subject, databases by type. So if you don't know your question yet for your IA, it might be good to just go ahead and go to view all subjects and then keep looking for history. So there's history. So I clicked on that. You can see that it gives me a lot of different things about it. So if you know, hey, I'm gonna do something on the civil rights, I'm gonna do something you know, on Asia, 
whatever it is, it'll start to filter that down immediately. So kind of cool. So let's see here. I'm going to click on the Civil War. So once I click on that, it takes me to a completely different place, and all of these will be about the Civil War. So that's kind of cool. So if you go that route, it'll take you to other different databases. I'm going to go back a little bit and go back to Galileo. And then let's just say I type in Civil War. It'll give me, sorry, my internet was taking so long. It'll give me this page. So you can kind of go two different routes on however you get to your information. Once you get there, the cool thing about Galileo is 100% of your results are reputable for an academic setting. So you don't have to worry about, hey, is this okay? Hey, who's the author? You know, what are they actually trying to say? You don't have, you know, some random blogger telling you his opinion and it's hard to decipher, you know, what's real and what's not real. This is good because it's all, you know, non-biased, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing that's nice about it too is it automatically will give you the citation in APA format. Y'all's are in APA, right? Because it's history? Okay, so y'all will do everything in APA. This is really nice because it automatically does that. You don't have to use like easy bib or anything like that to change it. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and limit my results. You can see we have lots and lots of them um, to full text. So I just go ahead and click that. And then you can see that it, the number goes down a little bit. The reason why is because we want you guys to be actually able to read it automatically without having to do anything else. So once you I kind of start scrolling, you can see in the middle of my screen, there's lots of different um, types of resources. And it'll tell you right in the very beginning the type of resource it is. If you have to find a certain thing or you're looking for a magazine, an academic journal, you can continue to filter on that left hand side of your screen. If you're here, it just will kind of show you them all together here. So I'm going to scroll until I see, let's see, doesn't really matter. I'll click on this one. Okay, so once you click on one, it's going, the, I, again, I like to work efficiently. It's going to give you that description. Read that first. A lot of times when I have students come up to me and have me help them with research, they spend a lot of time reading um, materials that, does, they, that doesn't pertain to like, what they're asking. So read that description, kind of see if it goes for you. Um, and then over on the left-hand side, PDF full text, that's how you'll actually read it. To me, the best thing you can do is compile a lot of different resources and then start doing your reading. So try to get as many resources as you can that you think connect to your question and then start kind of filtering through those instead of, okay, I have one resource, I'm gonna go ahead and dissect that. Um, that just is kind of a little bit painful to me. It doesn't really help you out. If you want to save it, you can see over here it says Tools Google Drive. Um, the number one thing people come to me about is, I found this great resource on Galileo or on SERS or something like that and I can't find it again. Go ahead and save as you go, even if you don't end up using the resource later. So if I kind of read this, I'm kind of like, okay, this seems to be a pretty good one. I think I'll like it a lot. I think it'll go with what I'm talking about. Google Drive. And then you'll sign in with your Hall County. Allow it. And then it says, this document has been saved to your Google Drive account. So you should always look for that, and then it'll be in a different folder in your Google Drive account. Do that as you go as many times as you can with as many resources as you can, and that way you never lose your work. Um, then if once you're kind of like at the point where you found, you know, I don't know, six or seven resources, they all seem to be good, now you're going to see if they help you with your topic. So PDF full text. And then you can see, oh, there it goes. There's my full text right here. There's a few things that you can do um, up top tools wise. You can also look at the table of contents and filter it through that way. Obviously, you won't go straight from the beginning and read this entire ebook. You're gonna have to look and kind of find the parts of the ebooks that will help you with what you're doing. Then, once you know that you have quoted this in your paper, you've used it as a resource, it's time to cite it. So right here it says cite. You click that and then you just scroll down to where it says APA and there it is. It's right there. The other nice thing you can do um, is export your citation. If you do have like an easy bib account or anything like that, if you just click that and save it, it'll go there. Um, we'll talk about easy bib in a second, but it's kind of nice that that's there, but really you can just cite it right here and copy and paste it. 
It even tells you that APA, it's supposed to be called references and not works cited. I will say, if you copy it from Galileo here, it's gonna have this font and a little gray background. So, you know, you're gonna have to do some work once it's there and alphabetize it and format it correctly, but at least you won't have to do anything else with um, finding the citation and you know it's correct. So, that's really nice about Galileo. Does anyone have any questions about how to use Galileo? No? Are y'all already familiar pretty much with it? Good, okay. So then, I'm gonna go back to launch point and I'm gonna go to Gale. And the only thing that's different about Gale and Galileo is that it's just a different research database. It almost has the exact same capabilities, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna type Civil War again. And then you can see it looks you know, pretty similar. It has all my references here. I can filter it still to full text documents. Good, I can see, okay, I really want to look at, you know, a critical essay or I want to look at a magazine article, whatever it is. And then, let's see. Oh, my mouse is not working. Once you click it here, you'll see the Google Drive icon again. Go ahead and click that. Hall County, allow. And then it'll send it to Google Drive. So that's kind of nice too. You can also still cite it, that's at the top right here, and then APA, and copy and paste that. So you guys actually have it like so nice when you think about citing sources. Um, when I was in school, it was not like this at all. Yeah. Was it different for you? At the beginning, yeah. Oh, I was like, the, whoa, you're too young. It was real different yeah, for me. Yeah, at the beginning, it sucked to cite stuff. But yeah. then once I got to college, it was just like, <laughs> yeah. So that's the other reason why it's nice to use all these resources is, to me, the worst part about writing these papers and things like that is this part, like coming up with my citations and things like that. So this is super easy. Um, then, going back to launch point, SIRS, I just changed my own thing, there it is. SIRS is really cool. Um, it should have a login for that. I don't know if it's, okay. It will automatically log you in. The good news is it's really easy to remember it's WH student and the password's West Hall. Again, if you wanna save your work though, you'll use um, Google Drive. And also, if you forget that, WH student, password West Hall, it's on Infinite Campus or you can write it down too. Here's the thing that's cool about SIRS. Um, SIRS is one of the databases that talks about pro-con issues. So if you have a question for your IA that is, you know, there's two sides kind of thing to your, to your question, this will give you both sides. It'll give you a lot of information for that. Um, it also has a lot of topics that are relevant for today. So you can see trending topics. Already, you guys should be aware, you know, it has coronavirus, it has virtual classrooms, police brutality, gun control, things that are kind of hot topics in the news. It has them right here. So that's kind of nice to see them. Let's see. Let's do voting age. So I'm going to click on voting age. And you can see it gives me to brings me to kind of the page right here. And then a question, should the voting age be lowered to 16? Viewpoint one, viewpoint two. And it gives you credible resources that are fine for an academic setting in, with both viewpoints. So that's really nice. I think that's a really cool resource. I find this resource or this database interesting in general, just because it kind of keeps up with what's going on um, and things that you might be interested in for your IAs. Um, the same kind of thing applies. So. I'm gonna click on should minors get to vote. Um, you can directly download the PDF or you can save it right here to Google Drive. Same exact thing. I hit save, I click Google Drive, Hall County, it probably will make me allow it. And then it'll be in a folder in my Google Drive. Let's wait for it. I'm gonna have all this random stuff in my Google Drive as I do every single year. And then success, it was saved to Google Drive. So that's pretty nice. The other thing that's nice too is if I click on site, it pops up again. All I do is click APA and then I can copy and paste that citation um, or I even send it to EasyBib. So that's nice too. Then, you know, obviously then you'd scroll down and you'd see this article here too. Um, if you don't want to, you can read that summary and then again, collect as many resources as possible before you get started. So those in a nutshell are the research research database tools that we have in Hall County. Um, and again, if you guys use those on the forefront of your research, I think you'll find kind of what you're looking for and then you can 
keep going down to like Google Drive or to Google and Google Scholar. Okay, so credibility checklist. If you ignore everything I say and you go straight to Google and you start working on Google, it's really important to check your credentials. Um, this is random, but have any of you seen Social Dilemma on Netflix? Really? Oh my gosh, wasn't it so interesting? Oh, I want to show it in this class. You should show it. Oh. I will. Gosh. It might be like a morning before school movie that we have to watch. Y'all should do it because, I, I mean, this is a tangent, but I totally limited all my social media on my phone now, and my goal is like to keep limiting it, like screen time. I didn't actually realize how long I was on there, but I it makes me honestly want to like delete it all. So it was kind of crazy. And if I ever have kids, there's no way that they're going to have social media after watching that. So yeah. Anyway, that's a side note, but. Once I watched that too, this is so true with the credibility checklist. It is very easy for people to have things online that appear to be correct, that appear to be something that's credible, that they sound smarter than they actually are, they've used different techniques, whatever. And even still, if you guys submit something to IB that's cited from something that's not a reputable source, that will not help you with your score. So the big thing is go ahead and do a checklist um, this one is linked here. I can say or share it with Mr. Galt and he can share it with you guys. But just quickly, when you do that, before you even read the article, save yourself some time, look at the date, look at the author, check the domain, double check the data. All of those things will save you time when, before you even read the article. If you, there's tons of great articles online. So I'm not saying don't ever use Google, but when you do it, make sure you have it with that lens of, I'm looking into this first before just clicking it and wasting time. If you haven't been able to tell, I'm all about making my time worth it when I work on any kind of papers. So when I do this, I try to gather sources as fast as I can. Then I try to filter those sources. Then I try to go on and I try to do things that make my life easy. So I'd rather have the citation ready to go. I'd rather just know without having to look into it that this is okay to submit to IB. So, um, so let's talk citation tools real quick just because y'all are all in here. We will probably, you know, hopefully revisit this a little bit later with how to formulate your references page. I know all of you are rock stars anyway, and y'all have done this before, but just, just some helpful stuff. EasyVid does offer free accounts. So we used to have school accounts for it, and then they kind of got rid of that, but they do offer free accounts. Unfortunately, the free accounts are only in MLA. So the cool thing is what I would do if I were y'all is I would go ahead and gather citations I did find in Google after I've done all the ones you know on the databases. Go ahead and put them all in there as MLA. Just let them sit there. Then, right before you guys are ready, it gives you a three-day free trial for APA. So you can sign up for the three-day free trial, get all your sources in APA. You can push all the sources that you got from Galileo, Quest, or sorry, not Questio, Galileo, Sirs, and Gale. Put it there. It'll put it all in alphabetical or order for you put it in APA for you, and then you can just export it to Google Docs and it'll be done. I can show you that process a little bit later, but unless you've never, you know, if you've never done the free account, just wait until you're kind of ready to submit all of those different papers, but go ahead and store it all in there as you go. That's what I would do. I often get asked to about random citations. So like, hey, I found this random video clip that I think would be cool, or you know, an interview that I heard on a podcast, how do I cite those sources? I don't know those off the top of my head. I think that's really hard to memorize. When that happens and a student comes up to me, I usually take them to Purdue Al you know, with me and we both kind of comb through it to find the answer. Purdue Al is one of the best websites, I think, that you can find online that helps you with any kind of unique resources. Um, so if you, you know, can't come in here one day or you're at home and I'm not available, things like that, Purdue Owl would be the number one thing that I would go to if you have a question about how to formulate a citation. Um, you wanna do that because the worst thing you could do is write this beautiful IA, submit it, and then get you know, points taken away for something as you know, easy as a citation. So just make sure that you do that. Um, I had these linked right here so I can share this presentation with Mr. Galt so you can uh, visit those links later. So now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but now I think you guys are going to start practicing for the rest of the period with Galileo, Gale, and SIRS and start thinking about the questions that you might want to do for your IA. Let me know if you have questions along the way and then don't forget 
the proofreading piece. So I try to say that as much as I can. As long as you give me time, you know, don't tell me when it's like 10 minutes before because then we won't be able to work on it. But if you share it with me on Google Drive and say, hey, Miss Holly, you know, this is due in a week. Can you kind of look over it for me? I'll do it and then put comments on there and send it back to you. So that's a thing that I would recommend doing. So. Yeah. Again, guys, we are on that kind of first and second bullet point on that checklist or that six steps I gave you. So again, if you kind of know a topic that you want to do, start using Galileo, Gale, Liz, uh, things like that. Um, if you are confused and lost, use this time to, again, you need to start asking questions and trying to dial into a topic. Um, once you get all those resources or articles on that topic, we can then start looking for a more detailed research question. So our topic has to be something that we're learning about this year. It can't be anything from last year. It can be from last year. They, I'm going to stop this now. 